What is up, Eleanor's, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and either build them or fix them depending on how they rank. Now today we finish up our talks on the Mastermind Rogue, and unfortunately back on Tuesday it did fail our ranking, but today we are going to fix it and turn it into something a little bit better. But before we do, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Ready? Also, make sure to share the video with your friends and click the bell so you're notified when new videos are uploaded. As always with these videos, there will not be a whole lot of flashy stuff on the screen for these videos. It's more of a podcast type of video, I suppose. Uh, but if you would like the build guides that I do for all my builds and of course my subclass fixes, all of those are available for my members. So make sure to click that join button down below. And for only $2 a month, you can have access to that entire library. So what went wrong with this subclass, right? Well, there are a few things, right? This subclass is is kind of a relic of the past, unfortunately, and, and that's coming from something that's made in Xanathar's, right? I talked about a little bit how it's a little redundant to now have a race that can do this in the new Hobgoblin that came in the Mordenkind of Presents Monsters of the Multiverse book. And of course, a few of you expressed in the comments how well the Mastermind Rogue works with the Hobgoblin. And that is true. That absolutely is true. They both give some very useful things that you can do on your bonus action together. But ultimately, you can still do a lot of those really cool things whether you are this rogue or not. So what I would like to do is expand what this can do in order to make it even more complementary to a race like the Hobgoblin or just to any race, right? Um, there is also the other restriction here, which I didn't really talk about that much in Tuesday's video, kind of a, an oversight was that this really wants to be a small character and you're not gonna get nearly as much use out of this subclass if you are medium or larger just because of how the half cover works with, with people being used as cover. Um, it, it's, it's weird how that works and really you want to be able to move through larger creature spaces in order for this to work well. And that's obviously not gonna happen if you're a larger creature. So for those reasons, it, it's a little limiting in that case. So I want to take away those limitations. I want to expand what this can do and just improve on it a little bit more. Uh, is what I built today, you know, miles ahead? I don't think so. Uh, and in fact, there are certain things that I'm, I'm still kind of iffy on. So I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments below. That's where we have all of our discussions and all that good stuff. So without any further ado, let's see what I've come up with. Starting off at level three, of course, we grabbed Master of Intrigue, and I actually left this completely unchanged. I think that this feature is fine. You know, I ranked it as okay before. I think the extra languages are nice. I think the tool proficiencies are fine. Um, I, I don't think that there's really any reason to go any crazier with this, uh, just because it borders on you know, just, just out of place, I feel like. So I, I think this feature was, was fine as is. So not really anything to report. Master of Tactics, though, we did change a few things and we made this a little bit better than what it was already. So now with this, our range is now 60 feet rather than 30 feet because one of the biggest problems with this is that you do have to, you know, you can't be that lone rogue anymore if you are this subclass. This allows you to kind of be both. I do think that there should still be a range on this and I think 60 feet is more than fair. Uh, so as long as the creature can see or hear you still within 60 feet, you've got bonus action doing things. However, it's not just the help action now. It is also the disengage or hide actions that you can allow the other creature to take on its turn. Now this can be pretty useful, right? This is gonna be a free action that that creature can take. Doesn't cost an action, doesn't cost a bonus action for that creature. And basically what you're doing is you are sharing your cunning action. And that's really the theme that I'm going for here with the Mastermind Rogue, is the Rogue is 
the genius behind mobility, behind making sure that uh, you're always ducking out of out of the way, right? Of course, at level two, you got cunning action, but then you're also going to get things like uncanny dodge and evasion, right? These more defensive or at least, uh, you know, get out of the way type of features are really important. And so your job could be teaching others in your party on how to use these techniques that you have learned being a rogue. And that's kind of the gist of where we're going with this. And you'll see what I mean by that. But I do want to also maintain some of the original flair in that as well. And you'll see that a lot as we keep going. Speaking of which, now at level nine, we are going to get Soul of Deceit. It's the exact same feature, but instead of it being level 20, it's now level nine. Like I said before, I do don't think that this feature is anything broken. In fact, I think it's kind of mid, but at 17th level, it's trash. At 9th level, it's at least usable. And so I, I don't think that getting something that late is great. And so getting it here, I, I think you'll get plenty of use out of it. So like I said, it's completely unchanged. It's just been moved. Then we get to level 13 with Insightful Manipulator, and this has been changed. Same name, not the same feature. With this now, our cunning allows us to study and deceive those that are around us. We gain proficiency with insight and deception if we do not already have it. And if we do, then we basically gain expertise. We now are going to have expertise in so many skills. Uh, this gives you two more possibilities if you already had proficiency, which is really nice. And that's not where we stopped. If I just gave you two proficiencies at 13th level, you would say, you're crazy, this is bad. So in addition, I wanted to keep some of the, if you study a creature for one minute, then blah, 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 blah. So if you spend at least one minute studying a creature outside of combat, same thing, then what happens is you gain advantage on all insight or charisma checks against that creature for the next hour. And this can be done as many times as you want. I, I didn't place a limit on this. Um, maybe the time frame could be extended. Um, I saw some people online who tried to do something similar to this um, and make it affect attack rolls. I don't know that that's necessarily the way that I would go about it. Um, so I, I didn't do that. Uh, this is this is the, the way that I think that it's a little bit uh, more flavorful. Is it more powerful? No, but I think it's a little more flavorful this way. So you know, let me know, let me know what you think. And then finally at level 17, we've got a new feature that I'm calling exploitative tactician. So with this, we can now do two things as a reaction. That's right, I added reactions to this because I don't think that adding more bonus actions is a good idea here because we've already got a lot we can do as our bonus action. So I'm choosing to not interfere with that, right? So now as a reaction, we can choose a creature that can see or hear us within 60 feet of us that is being hit by an attack. You may, you may think that this is starting to sound familiar. And we can use our reaction to force the attacker to make a new attack roll and the creature must use the new roll. If the attack hits, then the target has resistance to the damage. This is similar, but kind of better than Uncanny Dodge. Uh, it, it gives you the ability to possibly, you know, turn a hit into a miss, which is great. It also pretty much negates any kind of uh, advantage. It also negates disadvantage, but advantage is going to be more successful usually, so it's fine. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the gist of this. But we can also do one more thing. When a creature that you can see or hear within 60 feet of you is subjected to an effect that allows it to make a dexterity saving throw to only take half damage, you can use your reaction to cause it to instead take no damage if it succeeds on the saving throw and only half if it fails. So this is your evasion skill. And so basically what we're doing is we are teaching our allies how to do these things. And I, I really think that this is a useful feature. Would I like to have had this back at 13th level? Yes, I, I would, but I'm trying to find the right balance of flavor while also doing combat. And, and the problem with this subclass is it shines in roleplay heavy campaigns, which is great. But in not so roleplay heavy campaigns, there's nothing going on. And it's a hard balance to strike, right? It, it does become kind of niche and, and that's, that's kind of bad. So I wanted to give it a little bit more of a combat prowess while it is incredibly late. 
I think that making it a little bit better in battle is going to help it out to be a little bit more well-rounded, even if most people don't play this far. So those are our changes. Let me know what you think down below. Like I said, this is one that I think is more of a work in progress. A lot of mine, I feel like, are, are really locked in, are really solid. I like the fix when I put it out there. And generally, it's, it gets a really good response. This one, I'm, I'm a little on the fence on. So I'm more than open to suggestions in the comments. See what the community thinks. And we will absolutely go from there. So, of course, that's it for today's video. Of course, next week we move on to the Phantom Rogue. I know some people have been letting me know in the comments how much they like the Phantom Rogues, and frankly, I also like the Phantom Rogue, so I am excited to uh, to cover that. And then, of course, Scout and Soul Knife after that, which I've gotten a ton of comments about Soul Knife, so looking forward to those over the next few weeks. Until next time, stay safe out there, stay healthy. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.